Oh, no. Oh. You can move on. Drink. Hello. Are we here? Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? So what do they see? You guys see the big slide? That's a good question. Do they see the whole slide? That's a good question. What do you guys see? Stop the sharing. So first, we'll start with us. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Uh, we, we need to look over here. Oh, I'm looking at this one because we see it on the <laughs> We have two here. screens going on. So on this side, we see you. And then on this side, we have our presentation. How is everybody doing? I, uh, we are definitely excited to get on this call. We got a lot of great information. This is going to be a content-rich conversation. A content-rich conversation, oh, yeah. which means... We are going to be teaching about profit centers in real estate investing in 2018. So um, my name is Jason Rodriguez, and um, I've been investing in real estate for a very, 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 very long time, probably about 20 years. And then we have here Zach Vanderweel. So I've been investing in real estate uh, about five years now. And I do it full time. And so far, I think we just closed 106 transactions. Lots of deals, lots and lots and lots of deals. Um, so over those years, we've been buying and selling. So we we do this this meetup meeting so that we could give back to the people in the and you know locally. And then I had first started by by you know wanting having some curiosity of of the real estate investing and um, and went to to uh, you know, through, through reading some books and some other things kind of intrigued me. And then I went to some trainings. Um, and then I found myself at a live meeting and, um, networking and trying to figure out like who knew how to buy houses and who, who knew how to sell houses. And I just wanted some information and some education. And I was, um, I was excited to, to see, you know, to, just to learn. So this is our way to come and give back. We do a few different things. We buy and sell houses. We yes. do coach and mentor people. We do trainings and teach people how to invest in real estate. Most people want to learn how to invest in real estate so they can get out of their jobs, their jobs, and and get into something that's going to make them more money, give them freedom, give them time, uh, be able to come and do the things that they actually do want to do. I am I am grateful that I've been able to do be an investor for many many years. Um, and I, I, you know, I've been doing it for, yeah, like 20 years, 700 houses and counting closed and, um, yeah, just totally be in control of your own time and your own destiny. Like no one tells me how much my stocks are going to go up. No, I mean, well, my stocks, yes, but no one says how many houses I, I, I buy this year. I say that myself. Um, you know, no, no one tells me how much cash flow I'm allowed to make this year. I set those goals myself and I push forth on that. Um, no one tells me how many houses I'm going to buy or what kind of cash flow I'm going to make. I set those parameters myself and my business. And that is freedom. Um, like on Friday, I am going out of town. My wife looked at me earlier this week. She says, baby, would you like to go to Niagara Falls? Cause we've been talking about it. And I'm like, yep. I turned to myself. I went to go ask the boss. So I looked in the mirror. I said, boss, we are Friday, right? Good. He said, we're good. And so we're able to come and just jump in the car, take the family, go to, you know, wherever we want to go and, and just enjoy life. Um, last minutes, you know, little getaways. And, and, you know, I want that for, for as many people that choose that to be their lifestyle and their way of doing it. So we have, um, we have this chat box that is um, available uh, right here on the side. And you can actually talk to us. And we like the participation part of this. All right. So. So we got a few people. Hi. All right. Got you. Hello. We got Heidi. We got Norman. You guys are there. Hi. Lisa's there. And um, and Zach. Obviously, Zach is here in the building. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So good looking out. Say what's up. Awesome. Can you you see us good? Does the sound sound good? If everything sounds good, sweet. Um, unlike a lot of the other, like, you know, meetups and whatnot, we typically have presentations and we give a lot of hardcore content. Um, uh, this is what I want to take off when I feel it. <laughs> Lisa wants to take off when she feels like it. I hear you. It's a good feeling. Be the boss, yeah. your own boss. Um, so 
Uh, we have a, a, like a formal presentation that we're going to go into the, today. Like this one is talking about profits and profit centers. We try to break it down as simple as possible, uh, but yet add a little bit higher advanced level so that you get it. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to give back, to give information to you. And it's information in which you could use in a real, uh, in the real world. So um, I just want to jump right in. Are you, you good? Yeah, let's roll. I'm excited. You're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Zach. Zach is Zach. So Zach's got this fantastic beard that he's growing. Yeah. He's kind of the hunter guy. We're going to take some boats on it. Yo, yeah. what's up, Will? Good to see you. I've no, Will has known me since I was in diapers. Really? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we got Jesus is there. Hey, Zeus, I see you. Awesome. All right, let's get right into it. So um, I'm going to share screen right now. I just want every once in a while I want to check in, make sure you see our screen. And right there, you should be seeing our screen right now. There you go. Now we know you see the cool. screen because we see it right there. So with that being said, we are going to um we want to identify uh we're talking about well, let me go back actually. Boom, boom. So predictable profits. So what exactly predictable profits means is this present th this this training right here is about teaching you how to analyze the numbers. To see, to, so that you know when there is profits in a deal. It's kind of like um, a lot of investors is are, are very interesting. They want to know how to buy, how to structure, all this great stuff. But then, when it comes to do they really know how to analyze a deal? Oh my God, they're like it, 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 it's just not there. So we want to make sure that you are exceptional in understanding and identifying the profit centers yep. in a deal. Boom. So identifying profits. We're going to talk about identifying profits. Profits if you're wholesaling, and then it's profits if you're rehabbing. Uh, split funding, what that means when it's appropriate, which is all the time if you can get it. <laughs> That's your question. But what is it? And then profits if you're taking over payments. So on the creative financing side, it's different than paying cash, and we'll go over that. Perfect. So split funding examples. We're going to get right into it. Oh, by the way, let me just back up. Uh, some of you um, are just kind of listening to us. You probably want to grab a pen and a paper because this is getting into it. Like, this is hot, uh, you know, like the real juicy stuff. Uh, for, for a lot of people, you won't find this on YouTube videos or anything like that. Like this is everyday stuff that we do on, on analyzing where the profits pretty much show me the money, yeah. show me the money, show me the money. Okay. 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 I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> so split funding examples. So let's just say we have a property that's worth uh, an ARV. Just so you know, we'll start off basic ARV means after repair of value, after repair of value. So, and what after repair value means is that that is the value of the property in its fixed up re full retail condition. So fixed up, looking beautiful, ready to be sold. When we purchase properties, we use this formula. It's called the MACO, M-A-C-O. It's called, that is the maximum allowed cash offer. If you look right here on the, on the corner, that is the MACO formula. It's the ARV times 65% minus the repairs is the maximum allowed Cash offer. You know what? Actually, our screen uh, is covering it. So I'm gonna. Whoop, sorry about that. I'm gonna go back here. So if you look right here, it says that the ARV, the, the formula that the when you're purchasing purchasing a property cash, it's called a Mako. And this is it right here on the corner. We were blocked by it a second ago. It's the ARV, the after repair value times sixty five percent minus the repairs is the maximum cash allowed offer. That is the most you could pay, and which also means that you are going to buy it for less than that. And we're going to go into that in a second. So I'm going to put my camera back on. Hey. <laughs> I know. I'm silly. Sorry. I want to have fun. All right. So uh, on this example, the property is worth, the after repair value is $250,000 times 65% which means uh, that will come out to $162,000, $162,500 minus the repairs. That is the maximum allowed cash offer, which would be 147,500 is the maximum allowed cash offer. And you always wanna, you, you, you wanna use this formula all the time. And in a moment you'll, you'll see why if you, uh, that you, you need to use this formula. So 
if 147,500 is the maximum we could pay, that the question always they say is where should we start? 138. And so we're looking to start low enough so that we can negotiate. And if we have to go up to the maximum allowed cash offer, we know our ceiling. But we want to buy before that. So $138,000 is. So numbers you need to know. Zach, you did this. Making an offer. You have to know what the ARV is, which is the after repair value. And that's based on comps, comparables, uh, like property sold at market, relatively close, under a mile, in similar conditions. So three beds, two baths, 1,500. Compare apples to apples. That's a whole different seminar. That's a whole different program. But it is important. You yeah. have to know what it repairs. So the repairs you're going to do based on what they tell you, and then you're going to go see for yourself and do your own repair estimate, what your expenses are. So uh, these are, this is the expenses broken down, which most people don't know. So what's in that 35% of the transaction when you do the MAKO formula? So when you times up by the ARV times 0.65, what's in the remaining 35% of the transaction? You have closing costs when you buy. So these are percentages. These will fluctuate a little bit up and down, but they're pretty close. Uh, and depending on how you sell, you're going to have closing costs when you sell 3%. If you're using a realtor, it'll be probably closer to 6 or 7 We do our own marketing, so we charge 3% marketing to sell. And then your holding costs through the whole life of the deal, so the whole life of the rehab. Uh, you're going to have a few different things in there. You're going to have your cost of money, electric, taxes, all that stuff is in the holding. And then the most important number, your profit. Say that again. Your most important number is your profit. Profit, profit, profit. So the challenge is if you break that formula, the only number that changes on there is your profit. So if you overpay by 10% for something just to get the deal, you're going to go through all that effort, all that work, all the repairs to make 5% profit. Yep, and that is not good. That would not be good. So um, let's move on here. So we're going to go over some more of the numbers that you need to know. So of that 15% that was on the other page, the profits are of the is 50%, 15% of the after repair value. So if you're wholesaling, or more importantly, this says the numbers you need to know if you're wholesaling. So we're going to talk about whether you're wholesaling it or whether you're going to rehab it because those two versions are going to have two different profit centers in them. Yes. So you need to know those two. And so I think sometimes newer investors, they get confused on what, where the profit is. So this will clear it up. This is if you are, you find the property, you put it on the contract, and then you are wholesaling it to another investor that is going to rehab it. Correct. So the profits are 15% of the ARV. If you were going to wholesale this and there was 15% left over, that means that you and the other, uh, and the rehabber would split that 15%. So the, so what, I'm giving an example here. I don't want you to put that the 12 and the three is always Correct. the profit center. That is not the, the case. What I need you to understand here is that you will look at the numbers and identify maybe the, maybe the, the rehabber will make a, a 12%. Sometimes you'll make 3%. Sometimes if the, um, if the, the rehabber may make 11% and you might make you know, 3%, excuse me, um, 4%. Um, and sometimes the profit might be 18%. And how might the profit be 18%? Or it might be 20%, or it might be 22%. How And how that might come about is that if you have the ability to purchase the property at a deeper discount. Mm -hmm. So the lower, the lower the number that you buy it at, the more profits that you build into it. So if you're a wholesaler and you're wholesaling it, if you can negotiate 55 cents on a dollar as opposed to 65, that's an extra 10% to use a wholesaler. If you're and rehabbing it, you get to keep that. And you as a wholesaler will keep that extra uh, additional discount that you receive. So let's just say um, if, there was, if you bought it and it was 15% and you were doing this 12% and 3%. But if you purchase the property at, let's say, another 10% cheaper than the formula, because remember, the formula is the maximum allowed. But we made the offer at 138, which means that it is less. There will be more profit for you. 
So that may say that there may be 20% profit. So if there was 20% profit, then they would get 12 and maybe you get eight. Or maybe they get 11 and you get nine. So just depending on it. So that I want you to kind of understand that piece. And it's kind of a play, uh, uh, um, you know, each deal by deal. But I will come and say a rule of thumb is we always look at the 12% and see, does it make sense? Look, uh, and another thing is I don't always, I'm not looking for, matter of fact, I'll give the example later. I have, so I have a, another good example for you. All right. So exit strategy number one. So I like to, to so this one is wholesaling to a rehabber. If your pro, your, uh, your property value in perfect condition is the ARV, is the after, which equals the after repair value, is $250,000. let us say you purchased the property for $138,000. You sold it for $150,000 to a rehabber that is going to renovate it and sell it to a family at full retail for $250,000. The rehabber would have made 37,500, which is approximately 15% return. And you would have made the difference of what you sold it for versus what you purchased it for. And in this scenario, you sold it for 150 to the, to the rehabber, and then you purchased it for $138,000, mm -hmm. which, uh, which was your purchase price. Remember in the, in the Mako formula in the beginning, we said you, you got it for 138. And so the difference inside there would be $12,000 would, uh, would be your wholesale. The wholesaler would make $12,000. And if you're that wholesaler, you make that money. Yeah. <clears throat> pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. This is just an example of just basic math and what that looks like. You know, it depends on how you also know what your buyers look for. If I know all day that my buyers that I've dealt with before look for this model, and I know that they just want to see a 15% profit in there and I can deliver that. My profits, if I negotiated 128, I would make an extra $10,000 on that same scenario because I know that they'll buy it at 150 happily to take it, renovate it, put 15, 20 grand into it and make 35 to 37,000. Yeah. And, and sometimes when we look at it this way, um, I, you know, yeah, it, it just makes a whole lot more sense. So here are the numbers. So the property is worth $250,000 times 65%. We're doing the formula again. Is $162,500 minus the $15,000 in renovation and repairs. Says the Mako is $175,500. We sold it to a rehabber for $150,000. We, we started our offer at one thirty eight, dollars and it was accepted. So that's the wholesale profit. So it's just kind of recapping it now just to see it in, in the formula aspect. We'll go a little bit deeper. We're going, we're, we're going soft right now. <laughs> so <clears throat> exit strategy number two, Zach, you do. So this is if you negotiate the same deal, but you decide that you want to keep it and renovate it yourself. Uh, so your profits would be a little bit different. So your property value in perfect condition, same scenario, the ARV, which is the after repair value, is 250 in mint condition. So if you buy it, fix it, and then retail the property yourself, you would have made both profit centers on that deal. So you would have made the 15% that the rehabber would have made, but you also negotiated a steeper discount. So you actually, if you fix it or buy, fix it, and retail the property yourself, you would get the 37.5 for the renovation, the rehab 15%, and then the $12,000 that if you decided to wholesale, you would have made, but you're keeping all that. So in this scenario, your profits would have been 49,500. Correct. And it's, and so a lot of times people, they say, all right, so I don't know if I want to wholesale or not wholesale. I always say, I always encourage that you do know how to wholesale. Why? Because even if you, if you're a rehabber and you're looking at deals, you are going to funnel through deals that are, that are still great deals that are profitable, mm -hmm. very profitable, but it may, not, it may just not fit what you're looking for. So it's as simple as like, all right, if I know that I could have, but let's say this deal came across your desk and you did marketing and this deal came across your desk and you're a re you're a rehabber, but you, you, you didn't, you, you just like to rehab. If you let this deal pass, let's say you don't like the area. It's too far. You were going on vacation with the family. You didn't want that kind of a rehab. Maybe the rehab's too small or the rehab's too big or, or whatever the case. Or maybe you ran out of money and you, you know, you, you, you get your money, you know, maybe you have all your money tied up in, in another deal. What do you do with this one? Don't just throw it away. Wholesale it. This is a $12,000 check. And this, this deal would sell relatively quickly. So 
um, one of the one of the ways we look at a deal and say, you know, going back to like, how much do we sell this property for? And I'm gonna jump. Let's see. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back a few slides uh, not, because remember before we said, well, how much do we actually wholesale the deal for? And it just kind of depends. Sometimes we do the twelve percent, um, and I, that's why I start to look at it. But uh, sometimes I'll look at it. I says a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house. Uh, if I have a house that's worth 250,000 and it only needs what this one was, how much repairs? 15,000 in repairs. And I could make, and the investor would make $37,500. I stop and I use real world, real common sense, just a normal person. And I say, would 50%, I like to look at 30% to 50% of the investors buy this property. At what price would they buy? How much profit would they need? Not the price, the profit. And, and then I'll calculate from there. So I'll say, all right, if this deal right here, think about it for yourself. I want you to think about yourself for a second and um, think if you found a $250,000 house that needed a very light rehab that was $15,000, would you do the deal for $30,000 net profit? That means you put all your money in and at the end of the day, you get all your money back out of the deal and you have $30,000 pure profit in your pocket where you go grocery shopping. You, you can use that for vacation. You pay your mortgage, you pay your car, just like a normal human being pays their, their expenses profit. So how many of you would, would do that? Would you would, you would do the deal for 30,000. Some, I think like uh, on a light rehab and in a great area, I think that they might sell it. So I would say, would would thirty percent of the investors buy that property to make thirty thousand dollars? I'm gonna say yes. I don't want everyone every investor to buy my property. Look, Nicola, uh, she said yes. She says I would. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I'd it's an it. easy. It's an easy slam dunk, easy deal. Now if that that renovation was seventy thousand dollars. No. If it was sixty thousand, no. If it was fifty thousand. Probably not. 40,000, maybe they might do it for 30, 35. But for 15,000 easy renovation at $30,000, that's when we come and we say, all right, if I think that I can sell it for 30,000 uh, with a $30,000 profit, there's 49,500 left over. 49,500 minus um, 30,000 leaves 19,500. So I might be able to make a $19,500 wholesale fee on this one. So, you know, 20 grand, that's, that's a nice number. So that's how I look at and engage what they would pay for. And you gotta, you know, you gotta know your market a little bit, um, you know, and, and know the investors and know what's going on inside this. So you're not just leaving the, the deal too skinny where they won't buy it. Um, but that, that is, I wanted to capture that moment. So, so we can identify what are we selling it for? Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. It's good. <laughs> He's a beast. Oh, so, 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 uh, tell them what, what did you just come back from? Cause like uh, a lot of times yeah. they see us, you know, they, 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 people see us and they're like, all right, so you're teaching and you, are you really doing deals or like, well, you know, so tell them where you was an hour ago and tell them what was going on. We're going to take a little pause here. Yeah. So I, I, I came by before we had to go over a couple of things for, for this presentation. And then I actually went and looked at a property up in, uh, Reddington, uh, New Jersey, which is about 30 minutes from here. It is a, Bank owned property. We have it under contract. I was checking out the repairs and what we're going to come and do with it. Uh, and I was just going through the actual like detailed repair estimate photos, stuff like that. Um, there's money in the deal. So it's worth about $520,000. Uh, I am getting it at, well, I don't want to tell you what I'm getting it at. Yeah. I might sell it to you. I'll sell it to you for 245. That's what I'll sell it to you for. And it needs, uh, on the, uh, on the heavy side, a hundred thousand on the conservative side, about $80,000 and more. Yeah. So, uh, so 240 and 80 is 320? 320. 320 all in. It's worth five to five and a quarter. So when you look at some of these numbers here and you're like, oh my God, that's so, so cheap. Yeah, no, they're out there. Uh, how did you find the deal? Bank owned property. Bank owned property. Real deal right now, today. This is live. Yep. We are live. So I paused for a second inside there because I want you to, to, to get like, oh, okay. Yeah, that happens only where you're at. Like somebody might be here like, well, that only happens in New Jersey or that only happens, you know, where somebody else lives. No, it happens exactly where you live. And if it doesn't happen where you live, the minute you move out, 
it'll start happening. Now I'm messing with you. <laughs> That's what my mentor told me in the beginning. I was like, Rah. and then I went and found deals. <laughs> All right, so let's keep on moving. So creative deals. So there's some questions inside creative deals. So talk about this. Act. So creative financing deals is, is different than your cash offer. Your cash offer is what we just went over. You always follow the Mako formula because as you see, if you break it, you lose money. Another way to possibly come and so buy it. One second. I want to stress this again. The way we buy cash is not the Correct. way we buy houses creatively. So it's like you know how to drive a car. Got it. So now this is like driving an airplane. You don't do the same thing. It's different. And I, I know I'm giving like two totally extreme different things, but I just want you to know like it is very different. So Correct. So with the creative financing deal, it's all about terms. It's all about terms and, and working it out with the homeowner. And this typically only works with homeowners. doesn't work with banks because they say you either pay or you don't. We don't care. Or REOs. Realtors typically don't understand it, so they just ignore it. Yep. Um, but this is typically for sale by owners, regular human beings that have regular problems. Sometimes, so sometimes the property may not qualify for the cash offer because if they have a mortgage that's, let's say, 70% of the value, we already know it's it's it, it's garbage if you're giving cash offers because you need to buy it at sixty five cents minus that whatever it repairs. So which would probably throw us at at fifty cents on the dollar. So so cash it just deals qualify. Yeah. yeah. So so the reason why we bring this to the table is is because you need that alternative strategy. Yeah. Because they may be a ten out of ten at being motivated and willing to be flexible, and you can identify that there is money in the deal. There's thirty percent equity in that deal. 30% equity, if you have a $600,000 That's a house, lot of money. That's a brick of money. That's 180 grand, depending on the condition. So how do you actually work something out with the homeowner where you can capitalize on that equity or that cash flow or the, the, the profit center that's there? So how we do that is creative deals. Typically, you still need to know some math in there. So it's the ARV. You still have to know that no matter what. You have to know what their bottom number is as to what they're willing to accept. And then you have to know what they owe. You also have to know what the condition is. You know, condition, asking price, repairs, that's standard pretty much any deal. But the reason we really need to know what they owe is because in situations like this. <laughs> I like to say that again. Typically in situations like this, what we would do is we work out some sort of terms where we could take over an existing payment. So let's say they have a mortgage with Chase Bank at 70 cents on the dollar, and they really are motivated to come and sell. What we can do is take over that payment we own the property, we make that payment on behalf of the owner until we can refinance the property out at a later date. So typically what that looks like, three to five years or until paid. It all depends where your profit center is. So a lot of the challenges that people have with wrapping their brain around this is this is not as slam dunk easy as doing the Mako formula. That's a formula. You can do that on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> you really can. And, and we have. And you have. You'd be like, hold on, what's the math? Okay, what's the repairs? Okay, that's where I'm at. Are we close? Let's do it. For the creative side, you have to go a little bit more in depth as to where your money is going to be. Where is the profits? So on creative strategies, typically we take over some sort of payment if there is one, if there's a mortgage in place, until we can refinance that property out later. And then we work out some sort of terms with the homeowner for the remaining equity. So in other words, they may have an asking price of, I'm going to round it off, $100,000. They may owe fifty to Chase Bank. What we would do is take over that $50,000 payment, make it on behalf of the homeowner on time every time, and then we come up with some sort of terms with the homeowner how to get them their $50,000. Typically, split funding is one of my favorite things to do. I do it with every day. I don't care if I'm buying a car. Yeah, I right. try and do split funding. Split funding, some now, rest later. Yeah. Some now. And we're going to talk about that later. in a few. Yeah, and we'll go through some slides too. But on the offer, you have to, do, you have to know some different things. What is you're going to be your money down? Yeah. Then it's going to be how much do I have to cash out on and what is your terms and timeline come and do that. So the cool part is, is when you do cash, you typically only have one profit center. If you're wholesaling, it's your upfront check. If you're rehabbing it yourself, it's retail equity. That's all you have. With these, you have typically three profit center buckets that you can do it in. You have upfront money, which we'll go over. You have back end equity. And then my favorite is the monthly cash flow. Yeah. So that adds up to total profits over the life of the deal. 
which is awesome because honestly, when you create these types of deals, I can make more money doing one of these with almost zero to minimal work than I can doing a full blown $60,000 rehab on property. Yeah. With less leverage to own that property. Yeah. And, and a lot of times less uh, with a smaller equity position. And the reason why that works because it's over time. So you have some time and you, 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 you know, all the numbers will, will play in that way. So um, let's, let's go into a, like an example and, and yeah. kind of teach a little bit more now. So let's talk about these. So these are, these are some ways to, uh, to, to source creative financing funding. Yeah. So a lot of people, so let's say I take over a payment. I just threw you in that, changed the slide on him. He's like, wait a I'm second. Like, uh, I didn't know that was the next slide coming up. But I was like, wait, there was an example. I was like, that was new. I was like, oh, yeah. No. Uh, so this is sourcing creative financing, the funding for it. So let's say somebody has a mortgage with Chase Bank, and we'll do some examples, some hard ones that you can see in a little bit. Yeah. But we, what we do is one of the ways that we can fund that is by taking over that payment. So in other words, I don't have to pay off a $50,000 mortgage at closing. Yeah. I'm making maybe a $1,500 payment every month. Now, on that property, because we're investors, I'm not looking to come and live in it. I am very clear with that buyer what my intentions are. Got gotcha. you. Uh, just out of curiosity, is the slides moving? I want to make sure that the slides are moving and that everyone sees that. If the slides are moving, put a thumbs up. You should see the strategy side. I mean, the, the funding sources. You guys are freezing. So we're freezing up a tad. Oh. Oh. All right, we'll figure that out. Yeah. The good news is anybody that's signed on to this, anything that you may have missed or that it's freezing on, you'll get a replay that you can come and watch us over and over and over and over again. So you'll get that link. So if you missed the party, you have to go and don't worry. You still come and get that. But we'll, right. we'll work on it from our side. In the meantime, we'll just continue on. Yeah. So let's see. Let me see if I can get those slides back in. Four, there you go. I don't know. Let's see. Are they moving? Let's see here. So, um, so slides, they should, they should be moving now. So I'm going to talk a little bit here and just let me know if the slides right now, we're not moving anything and the slides are not moving. So you should be on the creative financing funding side. Um, and so Zach, explain to them what the funding strategies column are and yeah. then what the priority means. Yeah. So, um, the funding strategies are different ways that you can raise the capital. And this is not all of them, um, but this is going to be a, the most popular. Uh, the number and then what the priorities are. So we prioritize everything one through five, typically. Yeah. One is the best, the top priority, my number one thing that I do. And it goes down from there, one through five. The reason we do that is because if it's a number five or doesn't deliver on as often as a number one, what we're going to do the number one things first. All right. So we are gonna, hopefully you guys can see us.
Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's like a Hello. Ah, oh, test it now. Hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ooh. Don't be shy, start chatting. <laughs> uh, can you hear us? Hello, hello. Can you hear us? Hello? Hello, hello. I don't know. Can anyone hear us? Are you there? Are you there? It might be a little slight delay for them. Is she not answering? No. Oh, Heidi, can you hear us? Is that C is in yes? The C. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. I like that. I see the C that is Spanish. Hopefully you can see us. We rebooted and got got back up. Uh, technical difficulties with the software. Just want to know if anyone else can see us. Okay, we're back. Nice. Oh, cool. Thank the Lord. Uh, yes, we are back. You okay. missed the best part. And I forget what I said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to jump back into it. C I N. I only see one thing. Speaker requests. James. No. Nope. Um, all right, S Heidi, you, you're sending one, one letter at a time. Not quite sure. Anila, just uh, give me, give me a thumbs up that you can hear me and that we are back so I could get the presentation back rolling. Cause I'm ready. The technology, uh, is, uh, giving us a little snafu -y, but if we are good, we, we should be good. I see some stuff. So, um, okay, <laughs> Heidi, she's uh, just sending like little one notes. I like that. Chat is disabled. Hold on. Okay. I'm trying to fix it. So we are working on it. So as long as you can hear us and see us, we'll go forward with that. Can you? And can you hear us? Can you hear us? We got our tech help on the other side, so we're just trying to figure that out because we are just just need about thirty seconds to get us back in and um, go from there. Not quite sure what's going on. Oh, that's because this is open, and then there I can open up the settings, enable the chat. There we go. All right. Try that. All right, just put the chat back on. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right. We see you. You got see it. us. We're back. Sorry. Yeah. About that. Sorry about that. It's tech. Okay, Nicole, uh, Nicola, uh, chat is back. All right, awesome. so if you can hear us, good. Say you can hear us, yes. Sweet, you can see us, great. I'm gonna put the screen back on so we can go back into the presentation. Cool. Thank you very much. Just keep, let us, uh, thanks, and just thank you for letting us know that you, you know, there was something popping up and you couldn't hear us. So I wanna make sure that we take care of you. Can you see the screen? If you can see the screen, let us know. Tom, do you see the screen? Now I can see. Okay. Okay. Great, great, great. You can hear me too. Yes, especially since I'm probably screaming. <laughs> Thank yeah, you for right. being patient. Everyone stood and I love it. Uh, that must mean that we're, we're doing, we're giving some good content and that is our objective here at Millionaire Makers. Thank Lisa. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Gabby. Thanks everybody for, for just staying there and going there. So let's move forward. 
All right. Um, sourcing creative financing. So in the sourcing of the creative <laughs> financing, uh, Anelia, shout out to Anelia how I'm getting a behind the scenes on the tech stuff. Yeah. Team is Definitely. awesome. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to jump in here. So okay. as I was saying before, we have the, um, so this is kind of like the, the 15 strategies on how we can structure the deal. So this is, um, funding strategies. Like how do we buy these houses? Is it always the takeover payments? Um, is it always buyer deposit? Is it private money? Like how are we going to put this whole thing together? And I started with that, with just strategies. And then I realized, you know what? They need, they need clarity. So like our clients, you know, we, we tell you, you know, they needed clarity. So they kept on asking and my brain always goes from one to five and I wanted them priority level. I'm a thinker that of that, that way. So the priority one, two, three, four, five is going to indicate which ones you actually going to use more often. So they're already sorted for you. And to be honest, about 80% of the time, you're going to, you're not going to go past three. Uh, the, the, the going down to four and fives is only maybe, you know, 20% of the times. So you really want you to just focus on just, um, the top ones, especially the ones in the twos. And those are going to be the ones that you do over and over and over and over and over again. So the, uh, the top two strategies that we do when we're taking over payments. Yeah. So, the, uh, the most popular ones are there's some sort of mortgage on the property that you're going to take over the, the actual payment on. So I'm, I'm clear on that. So I even tell the homeowner, I'm taking over the payment on your behalf. I am not assuming your loan. Yeah. Loan stays in place until I can refinance it out later. But the number one way is taking over some sort of mortgage payment. Uh, and then your buyer's deposit. So my tenant buyer that I install into the property that I'm going to work with and put my time, money, and energy into to actually help them qualify for a mortgage at a later date, they're going to give me a deposit. I will sell them the house subject to. So I'm buying on terms, I'll sell on terms. That tenant buyer that steps in, I could typically, if I'm, the term is owner financing it to them, I will finance them as the owner until they qualify for a mortgage and can refinance out and pay everyone off. And when I do that, I will typically take a 10 to 20% down deposit from them towards the balance. Correct. So give it, let's give an example and clean this up. So let's say that property is worth two hundred and fifty thousand okay. um, dollars. When and we when we sell the property. So what we do is we buy the, the property worth two fifty. We take over the payments or whatever payments they might have had. And then when we're selling the property, we're selling it for about the two fifty. And typically the down payment that we're selling it for via owner finance is going to be like Zach said, 10 to 20%. So on a $250,000 house, 10% um, is 25,000, 20% is $50,000. And you will get those deposits all day long. Yep. There's a lot of people that have money that cannot qualify for regular bank financing. And that's why, that's where we kick in. We are servicing the part of the market that is not, doesn't want to go get a mortgage or cannot get a mortgage, but has plenty of money, which is a lot, a lot. It's more people than actually qualify for a mortgage. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the second strategy, um, is that we use a combination of one, two, and three. So either yeah. a combination of one and two or a combination of one, two, three. And what that might look like, let's say they have a, a mortgage, uh, with chase or uh, city financial, or any of those, we take over that mortgage. At, um, and then if the seller wants some money, Let's say, let's say they want uh, $70,000. If they want $70,000, we could go to a private lender that will lend us the money. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on how much we're buying it for. And typically, just so you know, we're, we're, we're buying these properties. You know, we could buy them. Uh, typically, we're looking at about 70 cents on the dollar to 90 cents on the dollar. Yeah, I mean, we could buy them cheaper than that too. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of houses out there that... Um, the average person buys and sells their house within five years. So if they only put 3% down on the property or 5% down on the property and then they sold it in five years, that means they don't have a lot of equity. Yeah. They have 20 to 30% equity position maybe. So what does that mean? So that means that if the house is worth 250, they put 5% 5, 5 down. And it, and it went down another 15%, uh, the, you know, the, let's say the property value went up 
a 10, uh, 15%, that means they have an equity of 20%. And they may be 100% motivated or have, they may need to sell that home. Yeah. That, that is no difference between, between someone who has a free and clear house and a $5 million house. Yeah. Everybody has motivation to come and sell at yeah. some point. Yeah. So let's go into some of these numbers there to help better explain it. So um, our top strategies, again, is take over mortgage and buyer's deposit. And these are the top ways on how we are able to achieve what we call 100% OPM. That means 100% of using other people's money. So like in, in this kind of a scenario, if we're buying the property and we take over the, we take over the mortgage, we use the buyer's deposit as, a, as, um, as the buyer's deposit as purchasing my down, for my down payment. Let's say the seller wants $50,000, $40,000, right? Mm -hmm. Where do I get the $40,000 from? So number one, they say you could take over the payment, but I need $40,000. a matter of fact, you know what? Let me, I'm going to go into this one. How about this? I'm about to answer that on the next one. <laughs> I was like, I know there's slides. Uh, yeah, I know there's there. slides. I know you I'm getting. I'm around. getting. I was like, that should. Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, so split funding deals and the objective. So, on the split funding deal objective, the objective is using none of any, uh, not using any of our money, using other people's money, uh, uh, which is OPM, 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 <laughs> uh, or using uh, buying the property with very little down payment if possible, very little down payment if possible. Because sometimes they want they want more money, sometimes they want less money, but I'm always making my offer with less down payment. And the, the down payment that I'm looking to get in with is less than 10%. Does that mean that it happens every time? Nope, sometimes I gotta put 20%, sometimes I gotta put 30%. Usually I'm not going past 30% because then that goes into a, that starts to move into a cash deal. Uh, but, um, and, and the reason why I wanna use less than 10% is because when I sell the house via fi owner financing, they're going to give me 10%. So I I'm looking for 10%. I might get 10 or 15 or 20%. Mm -hmm. But if let's just say um, I get the seller to, to agree that I can give them 5%, take over their payments on the property. They deed me the house. I'll say it again. They deed me the house. They deed me the house. They deed me the house, which means I'm the owner. And they, they let me just put a deposit of 5%. Now I might owe them, and I'm, I'm doing percentages now, but we're gonna talk about actual dollars and cents in a few minutes. Um, and I know I've been looking over here, but the screen is over here. <laughs> um, so I'm talking about like percentages because it's five, let's say if it's 5%, but they have a, they're willing to, their equity position is 20%. And they say, you know what, Jason, I'll let you buy the property with 5% and you owe me the other 15%. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea inside there. I give you a little bit down, as little as possible, and then give you the rest uh, at a later date. So um, so that's a little, very little bit down. Uh, paying off the seller's equity and mortgage at a later date. So when we talk about paying off their equity and their mortgage at a later date, um, so, and this comes into the split funding kind of conversation, right? Yeah. So yeah, definitely. it comes into split funding where we give you some money now and the, the objective is so that we can walk in with very little money. And that means we're going to give you some money now and some money later. And I'm going to make payments until the loan is paid off. Number one, or, or I will pay you the pay your loan off and give you the balance of your money in three to five years. So that's uh, an objective that we are definitely looking to always hit. Um, so this will help to explain it. So split funding. So split funding, the objective inside there is using 100% OPM is the goal. So use as many strategies as needed from that list that I just showed you to achieve 100% OPM. So the number one the number one strategy on buying houses creatively is by taking over the mortgage. And then we will give them some money now and some money later. Some money later. And how much do we want to give them now? 5% or less, a little bit. What's the little. least amount you accept there you up go. front? There you go. A little bit of money. And so this kind of helps explain it. Some money now, you do this one? Some money later. So it's the least amount as possible on the down payment. So sometimes it's moving uh, expenses or if they're behind a couple payments in their mortgage, you can say, hey, I can get you caught up on your mortgage. You're at probably two or three payments. I'll get that money back to you and that'll be my upfront money and the rest of it I'll pay later. And that balance is to be paid when, uh, 
when I when I pay off their loan, typically our default is two to five years. I like three to five years, three to or five years yeah. until paid, depending on where your profit centers are. Correct. That's how we structure those deals. Correct. So let's see here. And so we say the lease amount um, for, for down payment. Where do we get the down payment money? So that, that comes right back to our list. Uh, so uh, the seller's deposit or the seller, uh, the buyer's deposit, investors, tenants, partners, that whole list, you stack as many as you have to until you can source the funding for the down payment and the upfront cost. And as the heading here says split funding using OPM. So we're trying, so we're, we're, we're saying, okay, if the seller says, um, this $250,000 property, the seller says, Jason, I'll let you move, you know, you can get in for, give me $15,000 as a deposit. And then you owe me $40,000 later. The question is, where do we get the 15,000? And the answer is, uh, on number one or two from the, the other sh sheet uh, of strategies, which is, is the identical one from here. And that would be the number one place we get that is from the buyer's deposit. Yeah. That's so the most popular. The most popular. Why? Because we know that if the buyer, the seller wants 15,000, the house is worth 250,000. My buyer is going to give me 10% minimum. That's 25,000. So if I need, where am I getting the 15,000? I'm going to get 15,000 when they give me the 25,000. I'm going to give that 15,000 to the homeowner and we keep 10 up front. Yep, that's the first profit center. That's the first profit up center. Front. Up front deposit. That and and so that's the first place we use it. And that is using the OPM strategy using other people's money. So split funding process. So it, this is just opening opening it up and kind of showing you some money now, some money later. The lease amount is possible as a down payment. Where do you get the money from the down payment? You want to give them a little bit of money. And if they want less, you know, three, four, five percent, where are you getting it? You're getting from the buyer's deposit. And then where how do you pay them the rest of their money? You pay them the rest of their money right here, the balance to be paid when I cash them out and get a new loan. So what happens is when we buy these properties, we're gonna put somebody else into the property that is going to um we're gonna sell it to someone via owner finance. They're gonna give us 10% plus down payment, 10, 20, 30% down payment. And then we are going to sell it to them and they have to get their own loan in a two year process um, is usually the, the average amount of time. And this is somebody, you know, good hardworking person that just wants to get a house. Maybe their credit has been beat up because of things and, but they, they work hard. They have, you know, they're getting on track. They have money. They have a good job. They're just saying, Hey, somebody help me. I need some help. The banks are not wanting to work with me. And they're saying, who's going to work with me? And Zach and I, put your hand up, Zach. <laughs> right this is us. We're doing it. We're here to help. <laughs> so they give us this 10% non-refundable non -refundable deposit. It's 10, 20, 30% non-refundable deposit. We get that money, and then we give the sellers some their money, and everyone's happy. Um, the monthly payment, they pay to me, to us, and then we pay the, the mortgage that's attached to that house. So that's how that all, all that looks. Correct. Okay. All right. Let's do some examples. So split funding example. Let's say the house is worth four hundred thousand dollars, and they're asking three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. This right here is only a twenty percent discount. Um, so that we're buying the property at eighty cents on the dollar. This does not. You cannot pay cash for this house. No, you will lose money to buy that. You will lose a lot of money. No hard money lender is going to lend you the money. Uh, it would just be not a good deal. Um, but because we know how to do the creative financing and do split funding and, and do that, that actually does work. So there's eighty thousand dollars of equity. How many of you would do this do a deal and take over payments for eighty thousand dollars? I'm in. Yeah. A pre oh, by the way, these houses are usually pretty houses. These right. are the houses in your neighborhood, right? You know, that you would never know that they're for sale because they're not they're not ugly. These are pretty houses that usually don't need much repairs, very little repairs. So let's go here. Boom, boom. House is worth four four hundred dollars uh, uh, They're asking three twenty. dollars There's $80,000 of equity. They owe $280,000. So they're saying, hey, they want $40,000. And what normally happens, they say, hey, look, I'll sell the house for $320,000, but give me three twenty. dollars But when we find out really what's behind it, 
what they really are going to get is $40,000 to themselves. They're going to pay the 280,000 to the bank and they, they're never going to get that. All they're getting is 40,000. So when I disassociate them with the mortgage and I say, Hey, what is it that you have? And you're in it and you're making $40,000. You want your 40. I could give you, I, we could work something on that 40,000. And I ask them, what is the least amount that you want? Sometimes the lease is not the lease that I want to hear, but you know, I still ask that. How much is, what's the lease amount that you would accept so that we could take over the property and that they could go and do whatever they need to do? They said 25,000. So they want $25,000 down. Now, isn't that a big difference from uh, trying to buy this property and have to raise $320,000 versus 25,000? It's the same house. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of you could, can, you know, I, I knew in the beginning I couldn't come up with $320,000, but I do know this. I could come up with $25,000 even in the beginning and knowing these strategies, I could borrow from a lender. I, I could borrow from a, from a private lender. I can, I could even today's time, I could put that on a credit card. I could do all kinds of stuff to get 25 grand. <laughs> I don't, you know, and when I first got started, I didn't have a credit card that had $320,000 on it. I don't know about you. Maybe you have it. But I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I could raise twenty five thousand from the people that are watching this. That's right. In fact, we had some people already ask us, "Hey, how do I do this with my money?" <laughs> and if you if you are interested in you know lending some money, let us know. We know how to park money and do great investments. So, um, some money now, some money later. Money now, they wanted twenty five thousand dollars. They said, and then the money later, uh, which and when we say later was in three years from now. Uh, with no payments. Why? Because we didn't talk about payments. We said we'll give you $25,000 now and then we could give you the $15,000 in three years from now so that you could go do what you want, you need to go do. They said yes. The other piece inside there that there was $15,000 in repairs. It wasn't a bad, it wasn't like, you know, the carpet was worn. It was a decent sized house. Let's say it's, you know, 2,500 square feet. It needed a little kitchen, a little bathroom. Um, and the carpet and a furnace, let's say. So that would be $15,000. Nothing crazy. From the outside, it doesn't look like a, you know, it's not a war zone house. It just needs some love so that we could get the maximum amount of money. So then how, how, how would we fund this? So rather, let's talk about the equity. So the equity on this is the $80,000 of equity minus the 50, the $15,000 in repairs would leave a profit of $65,000, this house right here. Mm -hmm. Right? So. That's 65,000. Right. So which, which profit center does that fit into? You know, that would be the next question. How yeah. How do we get that 65,000? Correct. All right. So let's talk about, go over it. 40, $400,000 asking 320. That's $80,000 of equity minus the repairs. $65,000 of profit. That's how you would see it broken down there. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're looking to do this with other people, 100% other people's money. So how do we come up? So $320,000 is what they're asking. They owe 280,000. Seller needs $40,000. We said we could give you some money now and some money later. Where are we gonna go? We're gonna go back to this list yep. and we say, okay, that $25,000, can we get that? And we go down the list. Are they gonna let us take over the payments? Number one, yes. Can we use the buyer's deposit to fund and give that, that, that $25,000? Well, let's stop, let's do the math. $320,000 times 10% is $32,000. And so that's 10%. It was worth four. Was oh, worth four. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, they're asking 320. Yeah, good question. Yeah, that's right. 10% so would be 40 grand. Yeah, the ARV is the after repair value is, is 400,000. Thank <laughs> Still you. Still got it. Thank you. <laughs> it's late and I got backup. Don't worry about it. I got backup. I'm his backup. He's my backup. <laughs> We're backup. <laughs> um, so the four, so it's $400,000, 400,000 times 10% is $40,000. Um, and that's the minimum. So we take 40,000 minus the 25,000 we can give to the seller. And that means that we would have a profit of $15,000 on the upfront. Yeah. If we only got 10%, if we get 20%, we're in a so lot of money. It's a brick of money. That's a lot of money. We don't need any other thing, anything else to handle that. You can come due to 15,000 in repairs and still have. Thirty, forty thousand dollars in profit, and a lot of times people say, "Oh, well, but what if the seller wants the money now?" So my conversation with the seller says, "Great, you know, sounds good. I can purchase the property. Here's how I need to purchase the property." 
is I can, um, I'm able to give you the $25,000 once I get my buyer in place. And I have people that are, I, I, you know, I have people on my list that are, are, are interested in purchasing these types of homes, which we have. If you don't have a list, you could just say, look, we know that we have, there are people that are interested in this type of a property. And so we're going to start the, uh, we're going to invest our time, our energy and our money to find those people so that we can get this done. And as soon as we get the money, we'll give you the money. Sound good. And a lot of times they're like, okay, yeah, as long as you tell them, you don't have to be shy about it or hide about it. And no, well, why don't you give me the money up front? That's just not what we do. We'll put the buyer in. Once we get the buyer, we'll, we'll give you the money. Okay. And if they say, well, how long is that going to take? Uh, let's say it takes two months. So if it, if it takes more than two months, uh, you know, you can have the, the, the house back. And if it's a really good deal, maybe I might say, well, after two months, no matter what, I'll make the pay. I'll start making the payments. Yeah, it depends if it's a, if it's a low payment and you, you have $80,000 in there, I, I could put, you know, a $2,500 payment on a credit card for two months until I can source my buyer if I had to. Yeah. Cause we don't want to give up the deal for, you know, because we don't have that. And, yeah. and so usually you, you could figure that piece and work, work around that. Uh, for the $15,000 repair, where do we get the $15,000 of repair? We could leave it just as it is. And maybe rather than sell it for four, maybe we sell it for 380 or we take off $15,000 or we, we could get creative or we had to put the $15,000 on the property immediately. We go back to the list. Yep. Can we do, can we use the buyer's deposit? Boom. Yes. We could actually use the buyer's deposit. Can we get a private lender? Yes, we can. Can we get a, a partner to, for, for funding? Yes. Can we put it on the credit card? Yes. Can we get another investor to sell this whole deal to another investor and they just give us a, a wholesale fee for it? Yes. So there's a lot of things that we could come and do inside this deal. And with that, again, this deal right here, uh, equity position would have been 80% minus the repairs of 15,000 leaves a profit of $65,000. Oh, and you can't see it because the, uh, well, the profit is 65. I don't want to, <laughs> I, I don't want to move the screen don't here. Don't click any buttons. Just keep it rolling. <laughs> so, so this is, uh, yeah, that was all that. So here's another one. House is worth 350, uh, 400,000, 320. Uh, actually showing the same thing. So here, here's another example. All right. Split funding. So on the side, you see on the screen, we have the strategies for split funding. What if they try to steal my buyer? Uh, so somebody said, what if they try to steal my buyer? They're not stealing my buyer. As soon as they say yes, we put the property on the contract. Correct. So they're not stealing any, any of our buyers. Um, and I've never had anyone steal our buyer at all. And we've done uh, a countless takeover payments. And we're deeded the house. So yeah. We own it. Yeah. And by that time we did all the paperwork. So no one's stealing anything from us. Um, and they really, they never, the seller of the property. Um, They're never really savvy yet. enough to come and do that. They just want to get out of the situation, get their money and move on. That's number one. And number two, they never see the buyer. Because when we show the property, they're not at the property to, to you know, if they, if they live there, we say, well, we want to do a, a showing. And, you know, we ask them to leave. And if, if they if they are still there, um, if they're still there, then we could. Uh, oh, we tell them, don't talk to the people straight up. Yeah, we need some privacy. Yeah. So, All right. So let's go to this next one. Zach, you do this. Yeah. So this one is worth six hundred thousand and they're asking for 90. But we find out that they owe 430 of a mortgage payment. Um, so they need the seller wants sixty thousand dollars. So how do we split fund that? So in other words, we'll take over the payment that's already in place on the financing for the four thirty, and they want sixty grand to sell the house to us. Uh, we negotiate through split funding, some now, some later. So it's twenty five thousand down now, and thirty five thousand later when we refinance the property out. So how do we do that? So now we go back to the actual funding strategies, and we start stacking. So on this one, this would be super simple to come and do it by taking over the mortgage is number one and the buyer's deposit number two. Um, that'll handle everything in there that we can come in and, and handle. There's also $20,000 in repairs on this one when we come and inspect it. So we could handle it with the buyer's deposit. Uh, if we pull 10% on this, that'd be 60 grand. So we would give them 25, do the $20,000 in repairs and at least $15,000 for us in profit on the upfront profit center. If we, yeah, if we did it like, like that, yep. Yeah. Uh, but let's say they wanted all 60 on the upfront and it needed 20,000 in repairs. So let's just say, hey, I'm willing to become, come and be flexible with you, but I want to get paid on the upfront and then you just pay off the mortgage at a later date. I'm fine with that. 
We may come and take over the mortgage payment and get our 10%. And then we may bring in a private lender or credit cards for the $20,000 in repairs that have to be done. Yep. So it's a mix. And then for that 20, for that investor or private lender, we're giving them a great rate of return on their money. You know, if they, if they lend us say $20,000 and I say, I'll give you 10% on that money return flat every year, year after year until I come and pay you back three to five years. People are happy to park money for 10% return net flat. Yeah. That's Boku de Nero, especially today. I like how you said that. Say that again. Boku de Nero. That's my, Boku. that's my Espanol. <laughs> <laughs> so in this one, just this scenario, there's $90,000 in profit. Ooh, so this is a bigger one. But yeah, it's just basically how to get flexible and how to come in and, and which profit center that $90,000 fits into. So we'll have some money on the upfront because we're giving them 25,000 needs 20 and we'll pull 60 for that scenario. Uh, so about $15,000 and 90,000 on the upfront, we'll probably have some cash flow in there and then the rest of it will be equity in the back end. So when that buyer finances, refinances the property out, we get a big fat check from the difference that we sold it to them to and the price that we get it from. Yep. So, uh, That's here, uh, these, the, the reason, so now we're ratcheting it up to, so that you can see that this strategy works on small houses, 150,000, 250, 350, 450, 550, 650, 650 4, doesn't matter. 750, 850, 950 more. So you can go all the way up to, you know, a millions of dollars. Like we purchased properties, uh, most of the luxury houses that we've done, we've actually purchased those by taking over payments and getting creative inside there. So, um, at $1.2 million, not a problem. They, it works. In fact, the bigger the house, the bigger the, the price tag on the house, the more profit, the more dinero. How do you say it? Boku? Boku dinero. Boku dinero. Boku dinero is what's going on. <laughs> uh, so here's what that would look like. $1.2 million. They're asking $900,000. They owe eight hundred. dollars This is so common. Oh, they owe $800,000. So the seller wants, what they were really going to get was $100,000. And they're saying, okay, and so I said, look, um, the good news is that I'm able to purchase the property, but I need some of your help. These are the magic words I use. So I need some help from you. Uh, I, I can purchase, the, I have good news. The good news is I can purchase the property, but I need a little bit of help. So you owe $800,000. And so what I'm able to do is in, is in situations like this, typically in situations like this, what we do is we will take over the existing $800,000 that you owe. And the and I, I, I need a little bit of help with $100,000 to pay you. And my question is, if I could, I could give you the hundred, but I need help. And what that looks like is I need to give, I could give it to you, but I could give you some money now and then some money later. So I give you some money now, some money later. What is the least that you're willing to accept um, from the equity so that you can have this house sold? You don't have to worry about the headache and it's all done. And when we asked that, they said $40,000. So they could, we could give them $40,000 now and give them $60,000 later in three years, we could do the deal. So from this scenario right here, we said, all right, where, how much, where are we getting the down payment from? Where do we get the $40,000? And we go right into this. And as you could already see real quick, but number two is where we would get the $40,000. And on $1.2 million, those properties are not getting 10%. They are usually doing 20% or more. Yeah, they're jumbo lines. These are these people, you know, people that are buying a hundred and twenty uh one point two million dollar house, they have money. So having 10, 20, 30 percent is very common. And so this one right here would have about twenty, like twenty percent. That's my, my my goal would be uh, starting at twenty percent, which is two hundred and forty thousand dollars non refundable. And they get the loan and they have to cash me out within two to three years. Mm -hmm. And um so out of the $240,000 of non-refundable deposit, they they would give me two forty. dollars I would give $40,000 to the seller, and then I would give them their $60,000 at a later date, which would be when they cash me out. So that's what split funding looks like. And these deals work where you live. They work where you live, yep. where you live. The higher the price tag, actually, the easier it is because nobody's talking to them. Yeah. These are garbage for cash offers for regular wholesalers. Yeah. Wholesalers, the regular wholesalers are not talking about them. The builders are not talking because they, you know, builders have a big pool, they, but there's nothing to build here. Um, and these are beautiful houses that need, you know, a lot of them need no repairs. 
So, you know, on this one right here, it's just a beautiful house. They need to come and sell and they need to sell quickly. They need to solve this problem. So we step in and we solve it. And uh, they say, you know, oh, I need the $40,000 now and you don't have the 40. Well, go down the list. Can you get a partner? Can you get a partner? I'll tell you what. This deal I will partner in in a second. Yep. House yep. worth 1.2. You could get it for nine and all we need is $40,000. I'm in. Here's my conversation. You fund the entire deal. I'll split all the money I make with you. There you go. And you'd be like, wait a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to give you probably about 60 grand and I'm going to get 120 back. Yeah. All Plus day. My money. I'm, I'm all day. That's a no brand. This is an awesome deal. I'll take this all day long and they're out there. So, um, this particular deal, if it needed fifteen thousand dollars repairs, that's nothing. carpet paint. That's you know nothing. This would have a, a potential profit of two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. So when you ask, would I put forty thousand dollars, or a private lender, or a partner put forty thousand dollars to get a piece of two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars, not yep. including cash flow, all day? I'm in. I'm excited. I'm in. So look at Zach. Zach's like he gets excited. He gets crazy. I'll double your money. Give me forty. Okay. Yeah. And you would walk with two hundred five, and they would get eighty. And they'd be your best friend for a very long oh time. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a this is a fantastic deal. This is why we love taking over payments and we wanted to show you all the profit centers on how those profits do work across the board. So um, you know, for the most part, we're about to wrap up and and you know, we wanted to teach you how to come and structure the deal, how to find money, how to think about creative. You know, we talked about structuring a cash deal. Anela, you could put that up. Um, you talked about structuring a cash deal. And we also talked about um, how to do the wholesale profit centers. Um, we also talked about how to uh, identify the profit centers on a takeover payment property. When uh, and also uh, when you take over payments on a property, it is um, a lot more. It's going to be a lot prettier. Yeah, it's going to be pretty houses they versus maintain they, they maintain they the property. Of. Um, we also said that the pretty houses, the loan to value is going to be higher, which is not going to qualify for a cash deal, but the person may are still going to be motivated. And, you know, uh, so we talked about that. We also showed you the, 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 the split funding, some money now, some money later. That's yep. a little secret magic weapon that we use all the time. And we, um, and sh also showed you that you can purchase properties in different price ranges. Um, Anywhere from 100 to 200, 300, 400, up into the millions. And obviously, the millions are bigger profit centers. And any of those, please call us and any deals that you want to call. Yeah, I buy houses. We buy houses. Uh, so we're going to come and uh, take this screen off and just let's go here. So we want to come and say thank you so much for, for being on the call. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Reach out to us. Some of you have some some deals you want to talk about. Please reach out to us. You want to talk about creative stuff? Please reach out to us. Um, you know we got a bunch of resources. You know your resources. Check your resources. We're here as a resource for you. And um, if you want to line up a strategy session and talk to us, please do so. Uh, there'll be some some information on how to set up a call to speak to us to help you. And we are more than happy to come and help you. The strategy session is there. In fact, we'll put well the, the there's a link there. And you can check that out. It is Jason and Zach. Zach. <laughs> Zach is all about Buku. Say That's it. Buku de Nero. Buku de Nero. <laughs> uh, Zach Spanish. Anyway, thank you so much. Talk to you later. I enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Boom. Talk Bye. to you soon. <laughs> Zach the. Zach the. Oh, the, the thing. The thing. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later, everybody.